Roulette is the most iconic game on the casino floor. The simple rules, potential for betting strategies, and the elegant spinning wheel have made it a timeless classic. But casinos know how much we love roulette and have plenty of tricks up their sleeves to push unsuspecting players into losing more and more money. The first step to overcoming this is picking the right wheel. And while there's a definitive best choice, casinos successfully trick the majority of roulette players into making the wrong one. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to stop the casinos from taking advantage of you by answering the big question, why do players keep picking the wrong roulette variations? To answer that, we need to look at it from two angles. First, we'll explore the psychological traps that draw us towards the worst game so you can learn to spot and avoid them. And second, we're going to open up the casino's playbook and expose how they force us towards the wheels that make them the most money. But before we get to the big issues, to catch everyone up to speed, let me show you why playing the wrong variation of roulette is going to end up costing you a lot of money. In the modern industry, there are four main variations of roulette, French, European, American and triple zero. These variations are determined by a small rule difference, as well as the wheel itself and how many green pockets it has, one, two or three respectively. French roulette and European roulette on the surface may look very similar, but there is a key rule difference that cuts the house edge in half, meaning you'll keep more of your money. I'll explain more shortly. When it comes to American roulette or triple zero roulette, the addition of one or two pockets might seem minor, but it makes a major difference to the house edge. If you played a theoretical version of roulette without any green pockets, the game would have no house edge. All money put into the game would eventually come back out. By adding the green pocket that never pays on outside bets, the house gives itself a small advantage because it now means an outside bet has 19 losers and 18 winners. So naturally, as you add more green pockets, the chance of losing increases and pushes the house edge higher and higher. Not just on the outside bets, like red or black, but with all bets. If the payouts remain the same, but the possible outcomes increase, then you're essentially getting pickpocketed every time you place a bet. On a French or European table, there are 37 possible winning numbers, and your bet is paid 35 to 1. On an American roulette table, you now have 38 possible outcomes, but your payout remains the same at 35 to 1. Let's take a quick look at the concrete numbers. European and French roulette has one green pocket and a 2.7% house edge. American roulette, sometimes called double zero roulette, has two green pockets and double the house edge at 5.25%. Triple zero roulette obviously has three zero pockets. That's a total of 39 possible outcomes and therefore has tripled the house edge of European roulette, a whopping 7.69%. That's worse than most slot machines. However, this isn't the entire story. I mentioned earlier how French roulette has a particular rule that can half the house edge. Then why have I mentioned that both French and European roulette have the same house edge? Well, the house edge is cut in half when you place particular bets, even chance bets to be exact. This is because of the la partage or en prison rule that gives half of your money back when betting on an even chance bet and the green zero lands. This makes the house edge on these bets just 1.35%. You can see right away, there is a huge advantage casinos have with these unfavorable variations over their fairer counterparts. From a 1.35% house edge to a 7.69% on what has been marketed as essentially the same game. The problem is, while most online casinos will feature at least one European roulette game, a lot of them don't offer the French version at all. I've spent a lot of time researching casinos across the globe to help my community find the best roulette tables. If there's a casino in your region offering French roulette or at the very least European roulette, then you can find it by taking the quick two minute quiz using the link in the description. So why do people still play American roulette? And why on earth has triple zero been on the rise? Who's playing it? Well, I think this is primarily a three pronged answer. Ignorance, buy-in and availability. To show you what I mean, I want to introduce you to someone. Meet Bob, he's going to represent our average Joe. He's currently on holiday and the resort he's staying at has a casino, so he's put aside $200 to have a little fun. When he rocks up to the resort casino, he's determined to play a bit of roulette, so he looks around and approaches the first table he can find. Which brings us to the first reason people opt for American roulette, ignorance. Our friend Bob here doesn't know any better. He knows what a roulette wheel looks like, but he hasn't a clue about the numbers and probability. 
If he walked up to an American roulette table, he would have no idea that the European table off in the corner could give him better odds. Of course, it wouldn't take long to remedy this knowledge gap, but he has no reason to. In fact, many people like Bob simply don't care. He's not here to win, he's here to gamble and have fun. But if you are out to win, the first thing you need to do is your research. Make sure you're playing the right game and don't put down any money unless you know the numbers you're working with. Anyway, back to Bob. What if, instead of going for the first table he sees, he notices that he has some options? For our example, let's say there's one each of the main variations. French, European, American and triple zero. We've established that Bob doesn't know a lot about the details of roulette, but this time he's taking some time to ask a croupier or look at a customer information sheet, so he's taking the right first step. Unfortunately, a lot of the fancy words and differences between the tables are lost on Bob. The idea of la partage isn't only a mystery to Bob, but probably sounds a bit like gobbledygook. So French and European tables look identical to him. But more than that, our friend Bob here isn't great with numbers and doesn't fully understand the house edge. However, what he does understand is that when he walks over to the single zero roulette tables, they come with a minimum bet of $25. Just eight losses would cost him his entire budget. Meanwhile, the triple zero table has a minimum bet of just one dollar. I don't think it's difficult to figure out which one he's more likely to play. See, when casinos do offer games with a low house edge, there needs to be some offset to account for the slim profit margin. The most common way casinos do this is by raising the minimum bet. If you lose, you're going to lose big. Since the house edge is much smaller for single zero roulette, most land-based casinos will end up jacking up the minimum bet, which wards off all but the high rollers, who are going to spend thousands regardless. It can be easy to forget, but your average gambler doesn't have the kind of faith we do in numbers. You and I know that the higher buy-in is often worth it, but someone like Bob doesn't and won't like the risk that comes with it. And this is why triple zero tables have really been on the rise. We as people are biased towards cheaper things, Short-term savings are much more appealing than long-term rewards, and that's coming out in full force here. Not only does the triple zero table look far less intimidating, but for Bob, who's playing on a tight budget, those smaller bets mean he can play for a lot longer, even on a losing streak. In this situation, even if Bob did understand all the numbers and probabilities, he might still choose to play triple zero, or at least the American table, just because his priorities are elsewhere. But sometimes his priorities or anyone else's don't matter because often you just won't have a choice. And that's because of the final reason people play worse roulette variations, availability. The biggest determining factor in what version of roulette you play is often whichever one is available, especially for someone in Bob's situation where you're playing at a small resort casino. You'll probably only have one type of roulette to choose from. And increasingly, especially in the US, that choice is American Roulette, or even triple zero. It's not surprising that casinos would rather offer games with better profit margins, especially since it isn't stopping people from playing the games. Some people even prefer the smaller buy-in, but as reasonable as it might seem, I still think it's a coercive business decision to replace these tables and give unsuspecting players no choice but to play them. It's bad enough with American Roulette, but triple zero wheels are a step too far. The overall lesson here is that knowledge is power. If we understand what draws us towards these worse betting choices and the ways in which casinos push us towards making them, we can consciously pull away. If you've been unfamiliar with the drastic difference in house edge up until now, consider this your sign to step back from bad tables. If the only game available to you is a triple zero wheel, just walk away, you'll find better RTPs playing slots and at least there'll be a jackpot to match. We need to show the casinos that we won't stand for these terrible games and the only way to get them removed is to spread this knowledge and stop playing them en masse. So share the message, share this video and stop playing American and triple zero roulette. Show these greedy casinos that we won't settle for these variations that have been manipulated to fill their pockets. And if you're on the hunt for a casino that offers the fairer variations, then I have you covered. Head on into the description and take the quiz where I match players up with the best online casino based on their preferences and location. Let me know that you love roulette and I'll find you a site with a single zero roulette table and potentially even that elusive French table if it's available where you live. And while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe to let me know you like the video. That's all for now and I'll see you in the next video.